the chat. Um, it just basically means, um, well, originally starting out, uh, it was honestly just the, with the whole butterfly aspect, with the coming together, creating a community, and it's like a trap. You get here, you're trapped. But then um, we took it a step further and kind of really dug deep into the the meaning of trap. And um, now we kind of just take the trap and turn it into take risks and prosper. One narrative that I see a lot is you speaking about a lot of people loving themselves. Right. Now, within the community that you're building, with it being an all-female gym, I see the term fly girls. Can you give me what, when you hear the term fly girls, what does that bring out of you when you hear that term or when you state that term? Um, I think when you hear fly girl, what comes to my mind is a woman that, first of all, isn't afraid of taking a chance um just because you know in any aspect of life where you you're not sure uh, there's uncertainty um we kind of just go into our corners or we're not really sure as to if we're ready to take that leap of faith so um Hearing the fly girl is just basically someone who's courageous, someone who isn't afraid of taking a chance, um, understanding that they're not sure what's going to come out of it, but it's still having that mindset of this is what I want to do and I'm going to do it. Um, Someone who is uh, strong, um, who loves challenges, who's not afraid of being challenged, um, someone who is disciplined. I hear uh, someone that's dedicated. It's a lot that goes in. And it's not even just um, in fitness aspects. When you hear fly girls, it's a mom, you know, it's a wife, it's a friend, it's a sister. So it's anyone really that uh, I feel like is someone that's ready, who's determined, um, who wants to succeed in any aspect of their life. They can be a fly girl. So so that's the fly girl. That's the fly girl. Now, within the track, this is your facility, correct? Yes. Okay, so stepping into this fitness facility where, how long have you been in here now? Um, Almost two years. Two years. Mm-hmm. So you have 600 and some odd days plus of walking through these doors. Right. Can you take us into the mentality of where you're at when you put the key in the door to walk into your facility on a a day-to-day basis? Like, where is your mind at when that moment happened with just opening the doors? Um, I mean, for a while, (laughs) when we first got to the spot, I was at all. Like, it was definitely a outer body experience um, just because this is something that I've been you know, grinding for, for the last five years. It was something that I had in the back of my mind that I was going to accomplish. So it's like every morning when I come in and I know that I am able to maneuver on my own, come and go as I please, you know, it, it's definitely a, a outer body experience. To this day, I still <laughs> feel like it's just, it's, it's amazing. Um, but I just feel like if you put your mind to something, um, and you really work hard, that's the key is working hard, um, to make sure your, your dreams come, become a reality. It will happen. If you manifest it, it will happen. So, but it's, it's definitely still a, a crazy feeling coming here. Sometimes I find myself just looking around when no one's in here and just get teary eyed because this is definitely something that I've worked my ass off for so amazing amazing now one thing that keeps coming across is mind mentality things of that nature Mm -hmm. so can you give an idea or would you perceive to what would be the fly mentality the fly mentality is just Having that mindset to just constantly work on yourself. Um, 
every day is not perfect, even in my life, you know, um, every day is not a good day, but if I just give a little effort, no matter what, no matter what it is, if I, if I wake up in the morning and I'm able to see that day, it's like, how am I maximizing that day? Even if, um, it's not a good day. So it's like just having that mindset of keep going, keep going, fall down, get back up and keep going. So, um, it's just a constant work on yourself, no matter what, no matter what area is on in your life is if you continuously work on yourself, that's a fly mentality because you're working, you're loving, everything is being important to you. Um, I tell my girls all the time, you can't be good for someone else if you're not good for yourself. And that's with anyone, your kids, your spouse, your friends, your parents, whatever. So it's like a fly mentality is no matter what, first love yourself, put you there and make sure that you're, you're well for you before you can be well for someone else. Okay. Okay. So down memory lane. Mm. <laughs> Where was your fly mentality back in 2017 time frame? Mm-hmm. A boot camp that you conducted at Star City, I believe. Yeah. So when I speak on that, where was the fly mentality of you at the time of even just waking up off the bed that day, of getting to it, and kind of around that time frame? Where was that mentality? Um, well, that was you, that was around a time where I, um, just registered, uh, my business, uh, to actually, you know, be official. And, um, I was still like doing training and everything, um, at another gym, but, um, I had this idea of just starting a boot camp because I knew with me still working a nine to five and um everything else I had going on, I had to my thing is I always wanted to help and then I I know everything isn't uh well personal training isn't everyone's cup of tea. Um or just in a gym setting in general. So I just was like, what can I do to make sure that everyone is included? Um, I met uh, a wonderful woman who was um, uh, directing at Star City, which was like a, a after school program for kids. And uh, we met up and we basically uh, set up some times and just do boot camps. And we started there um, in the evenings once like I got off and stuff. And, and then we just had the mindset. <laughs> it was crazy because... I didn't know how I was going to structure this class. It was like my first real boot camp, but um, I just was like, we're going to go in there. We're going to do it. And um, I got a lot of feedback and response from the women. I am a dancer. I love to dance. So it was just like, what can I create um, so that everyone can have fun, create an environment where you are working out, but it doesn't feel like you're working out. And, um, just have fun being around other women. So that's where that came. And we actually did a couple more boot camps after that too. Um, I did a few at the Y and then now actually being here in the gym, we do whole classes. So it was definitely a a good beginning of something that I feel like is uh, going to be around for a while. Okay. okay. Yeah. Now, one thing that you've been stating through the conversation is you utilize different facilities at different times. Yeah. Um, can you kind of touch on the drive, the the passion that kept you going, even though you were utilizing different facilities? And also you stated as far as working a nine to five during that time. So you also had to, I believe, work with different schedules, make sure you're working around your schedule. Yeah. So let's see where were you at as far as the thing that kept you going and say, you know what, this is what I still want to go after. It was times where I didn't know if I was coming or going. Um just because of like my life, as you mentioned, like working the nine to five where I had to be at a place from eight to four thirty. Um and then it's like where do I fit in the time to train? 
um, something that I love, something that brought me joy, you know, um, knowing that I'm helping other people. It was just something that I knew I wanted to do. So, um, having that schedule, having, um, just to find the drive and the, the ambition to keep going. Um, I really had to kind of dig deep within myself, um, just because I knew what I wanted to accomplish. I knew the reason why I was doing what I was doing. And, um, some days were, uh, more difficult than others. Uh, but, like I said, if it's if it's something that you really want to do, something that you know you're you're, you're you feel so hold um, heartily about, then I feel like no matter nothing's going to stop you. I've been kicked out of gyms before, you know. <laughs> I've been uh, you know in different facilities and you know not knowing if I can continue to to train and work with my women that I was working with. But um, God always see through. Uh, your plan when it's something that's for you. So I feel like with that and having the heart that I have, like that's what kept me motivated. That's what kept me going because it is truly something that I love to do. Okay, okay. And with keeping that drive going, as we mentioned earlier, we're currently in your facility. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the place that you now kind of can have control over that schedule. You mm-hmm. kind of are able to maneuver at new state the way that you're able to um, with having this facility, there was also another life changing moment. You had a child during that time. Yeah. So, <laughs> from everything that you spoke on, going from the times of working the nine to five, working with other schedules, um, creating boot camps in the beginning, mm-hmm. now we go to where you had a child, you opened the facility. So during that time frame of it, what was your mentality? What kept you going? What was the hunger to say, no, I'm still going after what I love? Um, 2020 was a crazy year for everyone. But um, for me, it was just like, I honestly felt like it was like a slap in the face in a sense, just because uh, when we first found this, this spot, it was right, like, literally a couple of weeks before COVID really, well, we got informed about COVID. And um, at my nine to five, it was just talking uh, about what we were going to do, whether or not, you know, we were going to have to work from home and the seriousness of it. So it was just like, okay, I didn't really take it as serious. You know, I don't think anyone did in the beginning. And um, we signed, um, uh, the day after Valentine's Day left in 2020. And uh, I was so excited because it was just like, wow, um, this is really happening. Like plans, we started doing stuff right away. I think I even had a class here um, before I officially opened up the building just to see, you know, the kind of feedback I would receive. And um, things was moving. We were putting things in motion. And then um, COVID happened. And in the beginning, I just literally praying. I'm just like, God, I don't know what's going on. Um, I don't know like what's happening, I, what's going to happen with the space. I started to talk uh, to my friend and um, <laughs> even you, babe, <laughs> about uh, what the plans were. And um, as always, you ensured me like everything's going to work out. Everything's going to be fine. Um, and then the support is always the support that I get from my girls, um, even being kicked out of gyms and not having to relocate, you know, my, my tribe has always been there. They told me before, like, Julie, so no matter what, wherever you go, we're going, if we got to go outside and get this work in, we're going to do it. But, um, they were the ones that kind of said, Hey, this is what we're going to do. And, um, we're riding with you. So it's like, okay, cool. We got the tribe, everything's still set. We just got to kind of figure out how everything's going to play out with the COVID, the government shutdowns and everything. So, um, once we did all that, (laughs) we were up here remodeling the gym and things just kind of got a little weird for me. Um, a week, I think later, after I think we got some food, remember that <laughs> we got some food down the street, and it was just it wasn't sitting right with me, and um, ended up taking a pregnancy test, and I was uh, now expecting my first child, and 
after that, it was just like a whole break. My belief, of course, was just everything's going to work out. Everything's going to be fine. I mean, you've been through so much. Why get to this point where, you know, you're about to thrive. This is about to change your life and feel like everything's going to crash down. So I feel like that was a test with um, the universe, God, um, of how bad do you really want it? So definitely challenging, but as you can see, we're here, we're still standing and we're still flourishing. So Okay, and thinking in current times there and hearing everything going through that, when you wake up every day, if you're able to reflect on the growth of the fly mentality over that time frame, how does that make you feel as far as you're seeing the growth of that mentality, the things that you do every day, just keep pushing forward? How does that affect you in the current? Um, it just, like I said, having the support that system that I have, having the women that I work with, um, I feel like they're, they're the ones that keep me motivated. Um, they're the ones that keep me coming into this door in these doors, you know, smiling and ready to work. Like I literally don't feel like I work at all in a sense of, you know, having to be at a place for a long period of time um, uh, or, you know, not really enjoying or loving what you're doing. It's like I literally come in here. We have a ball now. We work, of course, but the, the community that I've created, it allows people to just come in and and B, this is their temple. You know, this is their place where they can let it all go. Um, just for that hour, just let it all go, whatever it is, let it go. If you need to leave it at the door, leave it at the door, pick it up when you leave or just leave it there, but just let go. And, um, that's definitely something that they have expressed to me, um, that this place is just their, their temple. Like, it just feels like this is their church in a sense. So, um, I feel like having that support system, having the women come in that I work with, um, allows me to continue to stay disciplined, allows me to be that example, um, so that I can continue with the the mindset of being fly and putting myself first because, if I can be good for me, I can be good for them. And that's that's well explained. Yeah. Great, great. Now, as the community continues to grow, a new girl, a new fly girl, excuse me, a new fly girl walking into the facility, mm-hmm. what's one thing that you believe with them embracing the fly mentality? that they'll be able to walk back out of here with, with something that they take away from being here. And I know you spoke on it in regards to how your current girls are, but how do you embrace bringing in um, new fly girls per se? Um, I mean, it's not easy for anyone to try something that they probably haven't done before, or haven't done it in a while. So um, coming into a space, of unknowing is always a challenge challenge um so i feel like when when you come in these doors it's a vibe it's an aura that is just here and i've <laughs> it's crazy because more than one person have came and told me um that this is just it's just, they just feel like this is it this is the place um so i do know that the vibes that is here, the energy is here. It's all positive. It's all empowering. It's all, um, encouraging, you know? So I feel like once you step in and you talk or you you come in and you're seeing the girls working, it's just like, okay, this is it. This is this something I can't put pinpoint it. You know, everyone's different, but I've known, I've I've had conversations with women who just say this place is just the motivation because you have that sisterhood. You have the people that's encouraging you. You have, like, if you're doing a set and you you feel like you're about to give up, if I'm not even looking at you, you're going to see somebody say, hey, sis, you got to let's go. And 
just having that community, having that energy, like I said, here on a daily basis where we, we, we come in and our job is to just do the work, have a good vibe, good energy and leave. And I feel like just having that mindset, it rubs off the energy stays. And it's just like, once you come in, you're just, you're trapped. <laughs> you're trapped. Well put. Well you're trapped. Put. Yeah. So what is one thing that is currently keeping you fulfilled to wake up every morning to, to continue pushing the mentality, the brand, you, even yourself, your family? What's one thing at this moment that's kind of keeping you well? Um, kind of everything that you said, my family, my son, my clients, um, it's, 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 it's surreal hearing someone come up to you and say, um, I'm thankful that I've met you. You changed my life. (laughs) I remember the first time someone said that to me and when they said it, I didn't fully understand what I did or, you know, cause at that, at that time, my mindset was, Oh, we're just working out. We're coming in here. You know, I'm giving you these workouts and this is what it is. But to hear someone say, if I wouldn't, would have never came to you, this would have happened or my life has changed because of this. Or, and that is just a, like I said, surreal feeling like you just, I can never tell you or express how that feels because it's just it's unreal like i changed someone's life like i i did that like it's 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 crazy when you think about it so um i feel like having um this gym having this space building these relationships with these women um you know some people do take a take it a step further and if you're really you know putting that time putting that energy and dedicating your life fully into this commitment it's just like your life will change so i know that everyone is not going to do that everyone is not going to be this long lifestyle that i would hope hope for but if i get one or two three people that say jaleesa Ever since the day I met you coming in, it was hard, but I've changed. I've done this. I've done that. But you changed my life. That will keep me motivated, keep me going 100 percent, no matter what. Until the day is my time to go, just hearing one or two people tell me, Jaleesa, you changed my life. That will always be the motivation. Always. Great. Great. Now, as we come to a close, you know, you're a part of the Legacy Interview Series. Yes. So we like to lead it out with asking the question, what does legacy mean to you? Um, Legacy means to me is um, really creating, and I know it might sound cliche now, nowadays with everyone, you know, manifesting it, but it's honestly true when you speak on generational wealth, um, because I'm a mom now, things are are a hundred percent different in the way that I view life, the way that I, I move, and it's honestly just because of my son um, or my my future kids uh, to come. It's just everything that I'm creating, everything that I'm building, is to make sure that my kids are set, making sure that their life is a hundred percent different than mine Men- making sure that their mentality and they're aware of the world and how to maneuver through it. Um, cause life comes with no instruction instructions. And I feel like because of the place that I've been, it's like, I, I learned late in life about certain things. And because I know now the things that I know I can, give that to my son. I can pour it into my children. I can pour it into my household and know that we're going to be successful because I changed my mindset. I was that person that said that this isn't going to be carried on continuously. If I got to be that person to change how my future kids or nieces and nephews, cousins, whatever, 
that have to look at me and say, because of her, I'm going to do this, then I'm going to do it because that's what life is. Creating, coming and creating, leaving your foundation and allowing the next generation to continue it. So legacy is my family, my son and my fa- my future. Like everything that I'm building is to ensure that they're set 100 percent.